Hi, I'm Stuart and I'm a professional photographer. I'm Heidi, I'm not a professional photographer but I just love photography. So we're setting out on our vlogging journey um, and we've conducted quite a few experiments so far and the result of that is investing in a little new vlogging camera, the ZV-1 from Sony. Uh, we were previously using um, an A7 R3 uh, but without the flippy out screen it was really difficult. Yeah, you thought that you got yourself in the right place and then when we watched the video back not so much, <laughs> bits of head missing etc. So yeah, we've purchased this week, we've purchased a camera with a flip out screen where you can see yourself. So hopefully it's going to go a little bit better, hopefully that's one problem solved. I teach photography workshops here at Nest Gardens and it's an amazing place for photography in general because there are so many opportunities. Um, there is wildlife throughout the gardens and throughout the seasons but there are also landscape opportunities and macro photographs and just at the moment as you can see the autumn colours are absolutely beautiful here. Yeah it is a great, it is a great spot for photography, I love coming here. You're never short of a shot. So you might have noticed today the sun's out, which is beautiful, but it's really windy. So you'd have to excuse some microphone noise, <laughs> yeah. um, especially as we're only using a shotgun mic today and we didn't bring our labs, which was a bit silly. I think today the light's quite challenging for photography. One second you look and something's lit up and you go, oh, that's an amazing shot. So get your, your photo ready and by the time you're about to press the button, the light's gone in a bit and it, the shot's just not really there anymore. But the truth is with light, there's, you know, is there's advantages and disadvantages. But it's really bright, something can just be lit up and it just looks beautiful, it looks amazing. But it goes the other way as well, you know, the light can go down and it's kind of nature's own way of dropping the exposure for you and suddenly all the colours come out, it doesn't look bleached, so although we're saying it's challenging, really you just work with it. Well this beautiful ace of palmatum was the subject of last autumn's nest visitor guide. Um, it looks like we're probably about a week too soon for the colour this year, but uh, this gives us a good excuse to come back again. So I think Heidi mentioned how variable the light is today. Sometimes it's beautiful and bright and other times it's quite subdued as it is at the moment. You probably also have noticed how we suddenly keep getting squalls of wind. It goes from flat calm to really breezy. Um, so it really pays dividends to be patient with your photographs and wait for that shot where the light is right and the wind isn't blowing a gale as it is at the moment. Well, the light's gone in for a moment or two, so I think that's probably a good time for lunch. Yeah, I think definitely. A good yeah, time my for tummy's lunch rumbling for me. as well. So come on, yeah. we'll go and head for some lunch. Yeah, let's go.
That was a good lunch, Heidi. That's okay, my pleasure. I love my food. Okay, so we've just been talking about what we're going to take some photos of and to be honest, the wind today is just so gusty and the autumn colours are so lovely. I think we're going to try and get some autumn pictures because they could be all gone next week, I think, these leaves. So I think we're going to head off and try and do some of that. Well, this isn't the best composition we've ever found, but it's a good example of what waiting for the light can do for a photograph. At the moment, the light's very flat and the scene looks very two-dimensional, but if we wait... So hopefully from that you can see what a huge difference being patient and waiting for the light does to a photograph. And talk about being patient, that was about half an hour, although it's not going to be half an hour on this video. Um, just to talk you through this setup, this is the Sony A7R3 um, and on the front of it is the 24-70 G Master lens and a polarising filter from Lee. Filters can be mimicked greatly in post these days um, but the one that can't be mimicked is a polarising filter. Now most people associate that with making the skies blue and very vibrant but in actual fact it cuts reflections off all objects including leaves and in the autumn it's really invaluable for making the colours pop out of images and taking the shine and reflection off the surfaces. So after the rainbow, a very fleeting glimpse of a rainbow, there's a huge black impending cloud of doom approaching. So that might cut this video a little bit short, do you think? I think, yeah, possibly. Okay. Came prepared with my hat, but I'm not sure my hat's going to... No, I'm not a hat. I'm just going to get wet. Yeah. yeah. We're probably going to make a move from the lower part of Nest Gardens and go up to the more formal gardens, where there's more places to shelter. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cloud of impending doom. Yes, it's yeah. good, good description. Yeah. Well, what another brilliant example of how waiting for the light really benefits your photograph. The sun's just come up over the clouds and uh, lit this tree up behind me and it's absolutely beautiful. The general recommendation for autumn photography is to go out when it's a miserable day into the woods and tr try and find some mist or drizzle because it tends to make all the colours a bit more saturated. But I like to wait for a sunny day and especially a low sun as we've got at the moment because it's, we're closer to golden hour, um, the shadows are less harsh and when it catches little areas of woodland or trees it really brings them to life and they look, all the colours look as though they're on fire as you can see on the tops of the trees at the moment. So we've come up into the rock garden here at Ness. Um, the sun is setting now because it's, what is it, um, quarter past four. So we don't have the light in this garden, but really what we want to do now is wait for a little while to see if we get any sort of sunset. 
which we might. Yeah, hopefully. It's a lot more sheltered here as well. Um, so we've been battling with the squally wind all day and uh, of course now the sun's gone down it's lovely and calm as always happens mm, but typically. now we're going from golden hour into blue hour soon so that's another great time to be taking photographs but here at Ness um, the sun tends to set uh, behind the Welsh hills over the D estuary so it's fingers crossed it's never guaranteed but sometimes it can be absolutely stunning So I thought we'd uh, talk a little bit about what we've learnt today from our vlogging experience first mm -hmm. and then maybe a couple of hints and tips about um, taking photographs in autumn in the sunshine. Yeah. Uh, so vlogging, uh, it helps massively if you've got a camera with a flippy out screen. Yes, so, so much easier. So, We've been using the A7R3, the A7 III and the A9 for shooting video before um, and I submit lots of video to image libraries and things like that but if they really don't help when you're having to shoot yourself Yeah. because you can't see yourself. The screen doesn't rotate, it doesn't extend upwards like it does on an RX100 mm -hmm. for example. Um, so as soon as we tried to vlog yeah. it was really difficult. Yeah, it was a beautiful picture of we, we had, weren't always in it or only some no. of us were in it or it just didn't work. The flippy out screen has been a huge benefit. Yeah. Um, if I've got a criticism of the flippy out screen, it's a bit small. So trying to read the VU meters um, and any information like the ISO from this distance away, which is probably about a metre and a half, mm -hmm. is quite difficult. I think if your eyesight was a little bit on the dodgy side you'd really struggle. Yeah I'm um, struggling to be honest even with my glasses on. I can... But um, at least you can see yourself. Yeah so I you're, definitely you're not making any me. really amateurish mistakes and no. chopping the tops of your head off. No no um, which was very easy to do without the screen. The other thing that I found shooting video on the ZB1 is that um, the shutter speed which needs to be 1 50th of a second it's not easy for me to say 1 50th of a second um, because we're here in PAL land and we run at 25 frames a second mm -hmm. is really difficult to maintain because the even with the ND filter on and the smallest aperture of the camera which is f11 mm -hmm. um, things are still overexposed so it really needs another external ND filter which I know that lens baby make so we might get one of those okay. um, using the controls back to front you just get used to yeah, well that's like anything, it feels a bit weird to begin with, but the more you do yeah. it, the easier it gets. Yeah. And our final point, for now anyway, because we've only been using it for a few days, mm -hmm. um, is that uh, the ZV-1 absolutely eats batteries like you wouldn't believe. Um, so quick. You can understand it because the battery's tiny and it's shooting 4K, uh, but crikey, they, they last like half an hour and that seems to be it. So yeah. we're lucky because we've got two old RX100 models, the Mark 1 and the Mark 3, um, both of which take the same battery, so we've got three spare batteries. I still um, think, if I'm honest, I think we still might need to get some Yeah, we, do, we need to have a carrier bike. bag worth of batteries because I, yeah. after you've done a few takes, it's, mm. it's flashing dead battery at yeah. you. So. Like, seriously, I guess. Yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, another battery, at least one more. Yeah, I think that's a yeah. good thing. Well, we came as a, sorry, as a big aim of today. We wanted to capture the autumn colours. Like we said, we're a bit concerned after the wind getting up so much and all the leaves are getting blown about so much that if we're not careful in another week, they could literally have gone and we've missed them out. So that was a big focus for us today. And it's quite hard in really bright light to get the autumn colours. I always, I always find that really bright light, it kind of bleaches the colours out a bit. So all that lovely 
rich deepness of the reds and the oranges get lost, um, which is a shame. Um, so as the light went a bit softer, that made a big difference for trying to get these colours captured. You need to do them mm. justice really, because that's what you're always aiming to do in any photo. And I think we may have got some nice ones. Won't know for sure until so. we look so. um, at home, but yeah. My two pieces of advice would be, don't wait for moody, gloomy conditions. Um, they can produce fantastic photographs, but finding the right composition, especially if you're a beginner, finding the right place and chasing the things like mist and fog is very difficult and can be very downheartening. Um, it's much easier um, and sometimes a lot more creative to come to somewhere like Ness Gardens where there are a huge collection of different um, exotic and native trees all of which go different colours at different times of the autumn so there's always a subject to photograph so yeah. rather than having to be in a beech forest right at the exact moment that all the leaves turn gold and start falling um, which is very difficult if you come somewhere like this or um, the Arboretum at Westburton or the Arboretum at Jodrell Bank, any of these places or Bodnick Gardens in Wales, you're, and the number of subjects and the amount of photo opportunities is much higher, at least yeah. for beginners anyway. Um, I think the second thing that I would highly recommend and that's take a polarizer. Um, not to make the skies blue or black or however crazy you want the skies to look but just to bring out those incredible autumn colours that Heidi was talking about and we saw an example of that earlier on um, where all of a sudden the light changed and the polarizer just made everything pop for want of a better word. The third thing is to be patient. So on a day like today for example we've had really strong winds on and off then all of a sudden it's gone flat calm and you'll have seen some of the the images that we shot when it was beautiful and calm um, then the wind got up and we couldn't really do much the sun goes in the sun comes out you have to be patient yeah and the longer you wait um, especially if you can see the horizon and see which direction the clouds are going the more you're going to be rewarded with the photograph that you really wanted to take rather than the only photograph you could take. Yeah. Another thing, and you might get this as wrong, which it might, <laughs> maybe it is, I find if I just, when I'm taking my photos, I just underexpose mm -hmm. them by just the very smallest amount, just literally like one tiny little bit, I just underexpose it. Because I just find the colours come out so much more then that I think it makes my pictures look better. Well, i found um, that your brain is very forgiving of shadows that are underexposed because you're used to seeing dark areas and shadow areas in nature. Um, it's not as forgiving when areas are overexposed. So, for example, this little bit of sky behind me looks like it's overexposed on this video. And in your eyes have got a really wide dynamic range, much wider than the camera can capture. Yeah. And all of a sudden you think, crikey, that should be blue, not white mm -hmm. as it is. So if you underexpose a little bit, you can get away with a lot more than if you expose yeah. to zero or overexpose. And also I find that if I've underexposed a little bit, when I do get them onto the computer at home and I'm fiddling with them, I'm trying to make them look amazing and sometimes they look all right. Um, I find if I've underexposed a little bit, bit that's okay I can kind of recover those colours whereas if you've overexposed when you've taken the shot trying to get colours back in Lightroom or whatever you're using you just can't mm. and it's, it's such a shame because you can have the most beautiful picture but the colours you just can't get them so I'd always say if in doubt underexposed don't risk yeah. overexposing. So I, I underexpose all the time for almost everything um, so you've got an exposure compensation dial on your camera or you can set it in the menus. Um, I always have mine set to minus 3 EB or minus 6 EB and never over. Yeah, definitely. Unless I'm photographing birds in flight, but I think that's a different video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's a whole other story. <laughs> Thank you.
well it's gone quite dark now so I think we're going to head off home if you've enjoyed watching today's video and it makes it as far as YouTube remember to like and subscribe I think that's what we all have to say yeah yeah um, and keep an eye on the Nest Botanic Gardens website for uh, my photography tutorials uh, which are aimed at beginners and intermediate users um, you can book online and see all of the details um, and we'll hope to see you somewhere soon.